One of the last great wildernesses of North America, the cypress swamps spread over parts of Louisiana, Georgia, and Florida. This is difficult terrain for even the most intrepid of explorers. But for amphibious creatures such as the alligator, it's the perfect home. Faced with the prospect of extinction around the middle of this century because of overhunting, alligator numbers have been steadily increasing since they were officially protected in 1967. It was in these impenetrable cypress swamps that the alligator escaped from the hide hunters. And it's in these same swamps that the alligator thrives today. The cypress swamplands cover an area of some several thousand square kilometers of flooded forest. This rich habitat supports an abundance of life, both predators and prey. But without doubt, the top predator of the swamp is the American alligator. A fully grown adult need fear no other animal apart from man. Despite its large bulk, it moves with ease through the open pools and dense swamps. Its ancestors evolved in a very similar habitat some hundred million years ago. The vegetation may have changed, but the alligator hasn't. The level of the swamps rise and fall with the seasons. Throughout most of the year, the swamps are hot and steamy. The onset of the rains brings refreshing relief to all forms of animal life. Herons and egrets nest in the trees that surround the secluded pools. The egrets return to the same nest year after year, and much of the previous year's nest still remains. It simply needs some fine tuning. A huge female gator hauls herself out of the water right underneath the nesting egrets. For her too, this is the nesting season. Like the birds above her, she nests in the same location year after year. It's important that she chooses a site that's close to the water, yet high enough not to get flooded. She digs down into the soft, sandy earth and leaf litter, using all four feet. The rotting leaves will produce heat that will help the incubation of the eggs. An alligator egg is slightly bigger than a duck egg and also has a hard, chalky shell.
She deposits between 40 and 50 eggs in several layers, each separated by leaf litter. She hides all trace of her work, carefully scattering the leaves over her nest. During the two months that the eggs will be left to incubate, she will be keeping watch from the water's edge, ready to drive off any intruders. During her long vigil, she cannot leave the area to hunt for food, but she'll grab anything that comes her way. The egret is far too wary. The raccoon is an opportunistic hunter and scavenger and a notorious egg thief. It's now over two months since she laid her eggs and the hatchling gators are calling from within the nest. But what's meant to be a signal to the mother alligator is also a signal to any nearby predator. The raccoon only manages to expose the nest and eat one hatchling before the female makes her ponderous appearance. The young alligators all hatch within a few hours of each other. They make their strange clucking sounds from inside the egg and after they have hatched. The young reptiles are less than 25 centimeters from nose to tail tip when they hatch, but are already fully equipped with a set of needle-sharp teeth. As the female approaches the nest, some of the young hatchlings make a beeline for her. And end up straight in her mouth. The floor of the female's mouth is adapted to carry several of her offspring at a time. It just takes some adjustment to fit them in. Once fully laden, she gently carries the hatchlings down to the water and releases them. Slider turtles often nest in the alligator mounds where the freshly turned soil is easier to dig. They too benefit from the protection provided by the female alligator. The turtle eggs hatch at the same time as the alligators. The little sliders normally make their own way down to the water. Speed is essential. The turtles are smaller than a watch face and easy prey.
While the female is busy ferrying her offspring down to the river, the raccoon returns to try his luck again. But already the little gator knows that its best protection is its mouthful of teeth, and it holds off the attacker until its mother arrives. The turtle hatchlings feed soon after reaching the water. They eat aquatic insects at first, and then progress to tadpoles, fish, and frogs. It will take them six or seven years to reach adult size, about as big as a dinner plate. The hatchling turtles have to be careful that they don't get trodden on accidentally. Some even get a free ride to the water in the alligator's mouth. Within a couple of hours, all the hatchlings have made it to the relative safety of the swamp. Unlike their parents, these tiny alligators are near the bottom of the food chain. But well below the hatchlings at the base of the animal food chain is the mosquito. Every day throughout the summer, countless thousands of these blood-sucking insects emerge from their pupae and wreak havoc on the warm-blooded occupants of the swamp. The aquatic larvae are eaten by a whole host of aquatic life, especially the aptly named mosquito fish. The supply is almost endless and the water teems with small fish. The fish in turn are preyed on by larger predators, such as the water scorpion. This aquatic bug breathes air through a tube at its rear end. It manipulates its prey with its formidable forelegs and sucks the life out of the fish. Anywhere you find little fish in such abundance, bigger fish will not be far away. At over a meter and a half in length, the river otter is a formidable hunter. Speed and agility allow it to pursue fish through dense weed or between rocks. Although the fish are caught underwater, the otter takes its catch onto dry land to eat.
Otters are highly territorial and mark out their own fishing patch using scent glands under the chin. Otters are a top predator in the swamps, second only to the alligators. But only the adults. The young alligators are small enough to be taken by a variety of predators. And many of them do fall prey. In the cypress swamps of the southern United States, some familiar land animals have become extraordinary water dwellers. The fishing spider spreads its front legs out onto the water's surface to pick up any telltale vibrations of prey above or below the water. These hot, steamy swamps are breeding grounds for swarms of insects, and sooner or later one is bound to make a mistake. Although the cricket swims well, the ripples alert the spider. It spins silk around its victim to prevent its escape. Then it can settle down to enjoy its meal. Beneath the water, the alligator snapping turtle awaits its next meal patiently. It sits with its mouth agape and wriggles a fleshy lure on the floor of its mouth. It looks just like a wriggling worm. It's enough to deceive this fish. Where there are predators, scavengers will not be far away. A crayfish picks over the remains of a dead mosquito fish. They're delicate feeders and spend hours nipping off morsels of food. The young alligators are now just a week old and need to feed regularly. At first, they catch small, easy prey, such as this field cricket. Prey is plentiful. Some they have to hunt, some they simply wait for. In summer, the lush swamp vegetation supports hordes of caterpillars, such as this hawk moth larva. They're often called hookworms because of the curved spine on the end of their body. Many are gaudily colored to frighten off predators. Now that it's fully grown, it needs to descend to the ground to find a place to pupate. But the base of its food plant is underwater. This is no problem for the larva, as it's adapted to swamp life and can swim well. But as we've seen, ripples attract predators.
the young alligators are learning to hunt under as well as on the water. But down here, it's more of a hit or miss affair. And a crayfish is more difficult to swallow than a caterpillar. Although the female is still guarding her offspring in their waterside nursery, she can't watch all of them all of the time. The baby gator puts up a brave fight, but the raccoon soon learns how to get round those teeth. By the time the female arrives, it's too late. In fact, all but one or two of her clutch of four dozen eggs are destined never to reach adulthood. But while they're small, she'll do all she can to protect them. At around a month old, the young alligators have grown to 30 centimeters. It's now that they turn their attention to catching fish. They soon learn that they are easier to catch in the dense weed beds where escape is more difficult. Their mother is still close by, but by now the young alligators are increasingly left to fend for themselves. One or two can't resist the urge to wander. A black bear cub comes down to the water to drink. The alligator takes flight. But the bear cub is no real threat to the young reptile. It's more likely to approach the baby alligator out of curiosity rather than viewing it as a potential meal. At five months old, the bear cubs are very playful and a real handful for their mother. They'll remain with her for another year or more. Until then, they still have a lot to learn. Discipline is very important at this age. The cub will soon learn that it shouldn't wander off to the river alone. A large part of the black bear's diet consists of berries, but as well as fruit, they eat carrion, insects, eggs, and rodents up to the size of a porcupine. In the animal world, the length of parental care is related to the number of offspring. In the black bear, with only two or three cubs, it lasts up to two years.
In the alligator, which has around 50 young, it lasts a matter of months, although the female alligator will respond to the call of her young for up to a year. In the case of the fishing spider, which has 200 to 300 young, parental care lasts only a matter of days. She has carried the silk pouch of eggs for several weeks and the resulting spiderlings now swarm all over her. She lays down a silk mat on the trunk, just above the water's surface, where her offspring will remain until their soft skins have had a chance to harden. At this stage, they're tiny, not much bigger than a pinhead. They have to disperse over the water's surface to reach nearby vegetation, and it soon becomes apparent why she has so many young. Aquatic or amphibious lifestyle is essential for survival in the cypress swamp. Neither the king snake nor the rat is normally associated with an aquatic habitat, but here they both have learned how to thrive. Both can swim well, but the snake is the faster of the two. The king snake isn't venomous. Instead, it kills by constriction, suffocating its victim and then swallowing it. As its name suggests, the water snake is at home in this environment. It's an adept fish catcher, finding its prey either by sight, tracking them down with its sensitive tongue, or waiting until it can feel one brush against its body. The water snake is neither venomous nor a constrictor. It simply swallows its prey whole and alive. It may eat half a dozen in rapid succession, maneuvering them into a head-first position before swallowing them. But as so often happens in these swamps, the hunter soon becomes the hunted. The snake manages to find temporary refuge on dry land and escapes the jaws of the alligator. But the next time it ventures into the water, it's not so fortunate.
The egret has keen eyesight, essential for seeing the tiny fish it feeds on. It also has excellent hearing, but there's no mistaking these noises. They echo around these swamps at the same time every year. The bellowing of the enormous bulls can be heard across the swamp. It's late spring in the cypress swamp, and the booming calls of the male alligators can be heard day and night. They're advertising their position to potential mates, as well as warning off nearby males. The noises they make are at the lower end of the sound spectrum more or less deep vibrations that travel well through the water over great distances. These vibrations set the water on the reptile's back bouncing up and down. The depth of his call and the distance over which it travels not only conveys his position but also his size and therefore his attraction as a potential mate. The egrets are still wary. All this noisy activity is taking place right beneath their nesting colony. It's the female that selects a mate by approaching him. There's not much in the way of courtship display, but a considerable amount of nuzzling at this stage, possibly associated with the fact that the male emits a musk-like secretion from under his chin. Courtship may last for an hour or more.
during mating, the female alligator may disappear completely under the bulk of her mate. Mating always takes place in the water, where the male's weight, which can be twice the female's, is at least partially supported. Mating successful, the female shakes herself free and leaves the male behind. At this time of year, the egret chicks are already well grown and the colony is a noisy, smelly place. It acts as a magnet to the local alligator population. As their parents fly in with food, the chicks squabble over who gets their share first. The adult egret's crop is full of fish, frogs and aquatic insects. Repeatedly, the adults return with food for their never satisfied chicks. During these tussles, it's quite easy for a chick to lose its footing with fatal consequences. The alligators, alerted by the sound of one of their kind eating, gather in a feeding frenzy, during which any animal becomes fair game. During these bouts, the alligators will snap at anything near their mouths, including smaller alligators that happen to get in the way. Other juveniles know when to keep their heads down. But it's not just during a feeding frenzy that alligators become cannibalistic. Smaller alligators are a regular part of their diet. At over a meter in length and three years old, this young alligator knows it's time to head off to find a quiet secluded pool where there are no adults already in residence. This may mean trekking over dry land and through forests for several kilometers, during which it encounters some less familiar neighbors. The Everglades rat snake is longer than the alligator, but only a fraction of its weight. It's non-venomous, but its repeated strikes are enough to deter its larger cousin. The 
the young gator heads off into the pandanus palms that grow in the drier, sandy areas around the cypress swamps. This is the home of the gopher tortoise. The males are highly territorial, and should one stray into another's territory, a fight is inevitable. A conflict between two male gopher tortoises is reminiscent of a sumo wrestling match. There's a lot of eye contact and huffing and puffing each one trying to push the other back or even push over his opponent. In a fight where the males are of similar size, the contest may go on for up to an hour until one eventually decides it's had enough and retreats, leaving the local male to return to the tranquility of its burrow. It is while the young alligators are undertaking their life-preserving dispersal that they frequently encounter man. They often turn up in Florida's residential gardens swimming pools, and even children's paddling pools. Human casualties are rare, but the household's dog or cat may well disappear. The local wildlife officer is quick to respond to the call of an anxious parent. human habitation. the local residents aren't much bigger than itself and do not pose a direct threat. It is, however, dwarfed by some of its new neighbors, the manatees. These huge aquatic herbivores, they're often called sea cows, are now a rare sight along Florida's coasts and waterways. Overhunted, damaged by power boats, and more recently struck down by an often fatal respiratory disease, there are thought to be only two and a half thousand left in North America. These deep, clear pools also attract ducks and other waterfowl that come to feed on the weed and plentiful aquatic life. The alligator is never slow to seize an opportunity for a meal.
Using the dense aquatic grasses as cover, the alligator moves closer to the diving ducks. Underwater, the duck's vision is not as acute as it is on the surface, and they don't notice the reptile lurking in the weeds. With luck, the alligator should live to a ripe old age of over 50 years and reach a total length of six meters. By then, it will be at the top of the food chain and unthreatened by any other animal, including other alligators. It's a tribute to the alligator's amazing success that 30 years after it was declared an endangered species, it has made such a strong and successful comeback. And once again, become the dominant predator of the cypress swamps. Thank you.